Hello to you out there and welcome to View Business Consults Limited. This video tutorial is brought to you courtesy of VBC Tushins. Welcome to this tutorial. In this session, we will be examining the topic, the principles and practice of the double entry, and it's brought to you courtesy of View Business Consults Limited. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you get notified immediately new content are uploaded. In this module, we'll be addressing the following areas. We'll begin with an introduction to the principles and practice of double entry. We'll be looking at the underlying principles of the double entry system of accounting. We'll also examine the cash and credit transactions. What are they? How do we identify them? How do we account for them? How do we record them? We'll also try to solve some illustrations on the double entry system. And then lastly, we are going to see the posting entries for the elements of the financial statement. Just in case you haven't watched my video on the general purpose financial reporting, now is a good time so that you are not confused on some terms I will be employing. Let's begin by defining what double entry is. Double entry bookkeeping in accounting is a system of bookkeeping where Every entry to an account requires a corresponding and opposite entry to a different account. And what I mean by this is, for there to be an account, that means there are two parties to a transaction. There's somebody giving money while there's somebody receiving money. So these two are recorded in two separate accounts. The principles of the double entry operate on the basis that every financial transaction must have two aspects and these aspects are recorded in accounts. The principles of the double entry therefore demand that you debit the receiver and credit the giver. What then are the principles for the double entry system? One is that the books of accounts must be kept. Two is that the books of accounts being kept must be divided into separate accounts. Three is that each account is divided into two halves. The left hand side is called the debit side, while the right hand side is called the credit side. All transactions must be recorded into two accounts. While one is debited, the other is credited. The giving account is credited while the receiving account is debited with whatever the value of the transaction is. And to graphically illustrate this, let's assume that we have transactions between A and B to be recorded in the books of View Business Limited, where A is the receiver and B is the giver. In accounting for this, remember I said that View Business Consult must have books of account being kept and that these books must be divided into two separate books of account which is for a and b in this instance and these two accounts must be divided into two halves the left and right being called the debit and the credit side respectively i also established that while the giving account is being credited that is b in this instance the receiving account being a is being debited with whatever the value of the transaction is because we operate in an economic system we are not all transactions are consummated on cash basis if that be the case how then do we record cash and non-cash transactions First of all, what is a cash transaction and what is a credit transaction? Now, a cash transaction is a transaction where payment is settled immediately, while in the credit transaction, payments are made at a later date than when the exchange of goods or services actually takes place. The exchange of these goods and services transfers with it the ownership of these goods and services. Since payments for both cash and credit transactions are made at different times from when goods and services were supplied, we do not record them in same books of accounts. 
cash transactions are recorded in the cash book while credit transactions are recorded in their individual day books which could either be the sales day books or the purchase day books now all transactions from both cash and day books are posted into the ledger now let us try to attempt an illustration so that we can appreciate all we have learned thus far so the question is that we should complete the following table showing which account is to be debited and which is to be credited we see there that the first question is that i start business with 50,000 naira cash next is he took cash of 20,000 naira and paid into the bank bought goods worth 5,000 on credit from mr a paid 500 cash for rent Old goods worth 1,000 naira for cash. So let's solve this. And the first transaction is that he started business with 50,000 naira cash. The two accounts involved here are the capital and the cash accounts. Now remember, capital is the initial amount to start a business venture with, and hope we still remember. Our double entry principle that says we debit the receiver and credit the giver. All right, so in posting this transaction, we debit the cash account and credit the capital account. Hope this is clear enough and easy to understand. So the second transaction is that he took cash of 20,000 naira and paid into the bank. Now the two accounts involved are the cash accounts and the bank account now since cash is the giver and bank is the receiver we are going to debit the bank account and credit the cash account the third transaction is that he bought goods worth five thousand naira on credit from mr a Again, the two accounts involved are the purchases account and Mr. A's account. Let me add here, when goods are purchased, we use purchases account. But when the name of the good is mentioned, we use the name of the good instead of purchases. Hope this is clear enough. In subsequent videos, uh, I'm going to get right into this. But for the sake of this example, let's just continue. In posting this transaction, we are going to debit the purchases account and credit Mr. A's account. The fourth transaction is that he paid 500 naira cash for rent, and the two accounts here are the cash account and the rent account. So we debit rent account and we credit cash account. The last transaction is that he sold good worth 1000 naira. Or cash so by now we can easily tell which two accounts are involved if your guess was sales and cash congratulations but if you guessed accounts other than the two i just mentioned then you need to go back and understand the principle again when we sell we receive cash so we are going to debit our cash account while we credit the sales account Lastly, in this video, let's see the posting entries for the element of the financial statement. In my video, the general purpose financial reporting outlined the five elements of the financial statement to be the three in the statement of financial position, which are assets, liabilities, and equity, and the two in the statement of income being income and expenses. What are the posting entries for accounts that fall under any of these categories? Now, the assets and expenses have debit balances, while liabilities and income and equity have credit balances. That means an increase in assets and expenses are debited, while decreases are credited also an increase in liability equity or income is credited whereas 
a decrease is debited. Thank you for staying to the end of this video. I hope you learned a thing or two. There is so much to say on what I just thought, but this is the much I can cover in this video. I will be teaching more in depth in subsequent videos. Until I come your way in the next video. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video tutorial which was brought to you courtesy of View Business Consults Limited. Don't forget to follow us on our social handles. Also, remember to like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, for more tutorials like this. Feel free to drop your video tutorial requests in the comment section, and it will be attended to, as soon as possible. Thank you.